And welcome to the non-fireside fireside chat. There's no need for a fire because it is hot as Hades in the tent. <laughs> it's <that> melting. <laughs> yes, we apologise for glowing, uh, but uh, well, actually we're just sweating, but we're trying to be polite. <laughs> but welcome uh, to the fireside Sunday, well, Sunday night fireside chat. And of course I have James and Jamie. Hello. Hello. Hi. And we're going to be discussing something that's taken up a lot of uh, our mental capacity and I know a lot of worry from all of you and and that was the Inklahoma pride and the white muscle disease so I was the unfortunate soul who happened to come across the first uh, victim of, of, of the disease we were following a male lion and a lioness as they ran down from uh, the Rio Telepan into the drainage line and uh, Jandre was with me and we just heard this painstaking it, it was a cub call, but it, it just wasn't that normal, happy, healthy sound. And on further investigation, we, we found that poor little fellow down in the drainage line. And I mean, I, I was close to tears. It was, it was really heart-wrenching, but I, oof, I don't even want to talk about it. We're just going to show you what happened. So let's go have a look. Just hang on a second. I'm hearing something very strange in front of me. This is one of the mothers. Very strange. Sounds like another lion cub. So, I mean, outwardly, I can't see any anything wrong. It's lying in the, some mud. One of the little Inkoma cubs we've come to love has been injured. We're not sure how she's been injured. Cubs calling forlornly. This is really, really heart wrenching. But we must remember this is nature. The second cub is definitely down now. Um, although we thought the first cub was with a broken back, it's probably more than likely disease. Two or three cubs, possibly even four, seem to have gone down with a mysterious disease. That what we probably have here is something called white muscle disease or a variation thereof. Now this is caused by a nutritional deficiency, often brought on by droughts. Now it is not anthropogenic in effect, and I'm not sure what the veterinary treatment for something like that would be in a wild population of lions. And so the policy of non-interference will be applied. Oh, these cubs are so playful. It's wonderful to see. Now, these little cubs have been struggling with a bit of a, a disease recently, and it was because of a bad drought that we had throughout the, the, the winter months here in Southern Africa. And uh, they seem to have caught a bit of mange as well as a white muscle disease. And I think that's from malnutrition, not eating correctly. It does appear as if they're doing very, very well. All six cubs are here. So that is very good news for us. This is very, very special, everyone. I'm so glad you're... Wow, gee. <laughs> oh, my. <laughs> Isn't this fantastic? Well, there we go, and it looks like, uh, fortunately for us, we only only lost two of those incredible Inkahumas, and, and all of us spend so much time with them, and we are invested in them. So, just think, Jamie, what, how did you feel? And, and, and Well, you have came up with a sort of very smart reason to why the vitamin E deficiency was... Well, I've, I've come up with a theory. I haven't come up with a theory. It's not, it's not as it. It's just something, my understanding of the way that vitamin E is absorbed, which is fat-based. So you can't absorb vitamin E without fat in your diet. It's the way that it's transported through the intestine um, membranes and into the lymph system. And my sort of my theory, and it's not it's not confirmed by any of the um, any of the medical officials, the, the vets or anything like that. I'm not a scientist, but my understanding of it is because 
because their diet was so lacking in fat, because they were only eating buffalo and the buffalo just didn't have any, um, that it, they were struggling to actually absorb vitamin E. And at one point, four cubs were missing. Uh, when Taylor was with them the one evening, there were, there were only four cubs remaining. So it was such a vast, enormous relief when there were six and not and not four remaining and then the, the adults started showing symptoms and there was there were times actually this last few weeks where we were genuinely a bit frightened that mm. it was going to be utterly disastrous for the incumbents it, it was indeed and, and and i know i mean everyone here has got lots of opinion and james uh, you also spent lots of time with them while they were there. Uh, for me there were three things about this whole thing uh, that we've learned firstly i think jamie is correct i think that thing about the fat is very interesting because fat is a limiting nutrient in Africa. None of the ungulates out here uh, develop huge amounts of fat. They don't get fat like sort of grain-fed cattle, which means there's never a lot of fat, which means that their fat is in the bone marrow and in a drought. We know that animals, including human beings, will use the fat in their bone marrows to manufacture energy. So I think it's a brilliant thought from Jamie. The other thing, of course, is that it's selenium. Uh, vitamin E is required for selenium. So on the other side of the, the fat issue, once the vitamin E is gone and can't be moved by the fat, selenium is missing. Now, selenium is a very important micronutrient that has a huge amount to do with immuno um, sort of response. And so without selenium, well, then there's an ir 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 already an enormous problem with, um, with disease. But for me, there are two other very interesting things. The first thing is that we all jump to conclusions all the time. And um, uh, that, that goes, that that goes for thought, all of us, absolutely all of us. Um, and uh, dare I say it for some of you too. I mean, we all do it because we love to know what's going on. We theorize here, we throw out ideas and uh, we come to wild suppositions, some of which, and we have to do that because without that, great ideas wouldn't come around. But we do do that, and let's let's acknowledge that. And secondly, how resilient these animals are. There were great calls from a huge number of people to put them down, put them out of their misery, wipe the pride out, take them all out and inoculate them, give them vitamin B shots and E shots and selenium shots. We lost two. That was very sad. But we've got the rest of them fine now, and their resilience is just, for me, uh, quite astounding. Absolutely, and I think on that theme, I mean, with, with the sticks cubs in the mange, and the fact that the sticks cubs, mm -hmm. all eight of them, um, didn't make it. Yeah. One, admittedly, it was, it was an elephant-related death, as yeah. far as I can tell, but all of the, um, all of the dinkumas have kicked the mange yeah. from what we've yeah. seen. They're recovering. Yeah. They look a bit scruffy, now but other than a, that, they're healthy. We've got yeah. a question from Polly, and I'm going to give this one to James. Uh, so, with white muscle disease, uh, does the death come from dehydration? Um, I don't know. Um, I don't want to suppose after what I've just said. <laughs> but, but what I will say to you is that it's it's possible, but that lion cubs don't often have to drink. You know, they get a huge amount of water from their suckling that they do with their mothers. Um, obviously, a lion that is immobile is not going to suckle. The mothers are not very good at lying there and making sure that they feed their cubs. So yes, di dehydration would have been a factor, I think. But I think the major factor, I mean, whatever's causing that paralysis in the back and in the muscles is eventually going to affect the heart probably and the ability of the diaphragm to breathe in and out. It's a bit like a neurotoxic venom, I suppose. So I would suspect it's probably either heart attack or respir failure, yeah. Yeah, respiratory failure. And especially with little cubs, it's going yeah. into shock. Yeah. Yeah, that's also true. And, and, and I mean, exposed to the elements that that one cub was sitting out in the yeah. sun and uh, just... And in the rain. And in the rain. So yeah. that hot and cold could also ha have, mm. have done. Cold snaps kill animals really quickly. Mm. Okay, so we've got... Oh, sorry, I'm, 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 I'm like not new. Game? James, James, is this, I'm, I'm, this is my first time being king of the tent. <laughs> so um, let me have a look there. Uh, We're just, just looking at some for, questions for now, everybody. Jamie. Uh, <laughs> Diane from Texas. Uh, has been trying to read up on on white muscle disease and so i'm looking away uh, and it's it is very, very extremely rare in wild animals and specifically in 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 cats and and lions uh, have we ever heard of it being found in in other lions or whatnot in the area i mean diana if you did what we did which was a scour the internet for many mm. articles on any kind of information about free roaming lions with white muscle disease you'll know as well as we do how rare it is um, there was the reason that it was triggered uh, the question of it being white muscle disease was actually the fact that where were those lines in Mabat? Mabat, so just yeah, Mabat, uh, just a little bit to the north of us, that they had white muscle disease or had just been showing symptoms of white muscle disease. And obviously, with wildlife vets around here, you don't just necessarily.
necessarily treat wildlife. You often end up treating cattle because it's a, it's a it's a deficiency. There we go. There's the word. It's a deficiency that's far more common in livestock than it is mm. in wild animals. So this is a completely unusual situation, and it was very. It was, that's what I think was made it so scary. We couldn't find out anything. We couldn't research. We didn't know what the survival rates were. We just didn't know mm. what was going to happen. And with, as with Lindsay's next question, you say, what causes the paralysis? We don't know. We don't know what it, what causes it. it. I mean, to us, it looked like a broken vertebra. The animals went paralyzed from sort of the, where the thoracic spine joins the cervical spine. They went, they went pa paralyzed. Oh, sorry, the lumbar spine right at the back. Was that some kind of severing? Was it just a, a malfunctioning of the nerves? As far as my understanding on some of the reading I did, it, it's basically very similar to muscular dystrophy. So the, the muscles start atrophying and almost disappearing. Mm. And so there's no muscle strength yeah. left. And, and from so it's what a strength I, issue, it's strength not neurological. No, it's not, and, and w w w from what I read, it's amazing from in domestic animals, it's literally boom, and within mm. two hours, just that. I don't know, yeah. <laughs> but it yeah. works really quickly. Yeah. And that's that's quite interesting because we did for the with two or three probably about a week before that I remember looking at one or two of those cubs and saying they've got very fat bellies but they look very hippie at the back and they must obviously were getting that distro yeah. the dystrophy or atrophy of the muscles there in I the remember back. you saying that and at the mm. time we just thought oh they're going through that yeah. gangly teenage yeah. phase yeah oh. And anyway, um, Kathy, welcome to the fireside chat this Sunday evening. You wanted to know, do we know which um, which cubs were the ones that died? As far as I know, it were two of the ones from the youngest litter, from what I can tell. And the remaining surviving member was the one, with the, the little female with the floppy ear. That's as far as I can tell, but I'm not 100% sure. I actually still haven't seen the Nkumas mm. in a way that I can... Com I've, all the times I've encountered the Nkuma cubs, they've been asleep. Which is, it's great to see the clip of them playing. I mean, <laughs> that cub pounce with Byron was just phenomenal. But I haven't had them, I've had them sleeping. So I'm not 100% sure, and I'm not 100% sure about what um, sex ratio we're left with for the I'm cubs either. either. Uh, I don't I, know either. Uh, I thought I saw another teddy yesterday, but I, I could well be wrong. Oh, no, you could be I just think, but right. I just think that they're getting to such it's similar so sizes it's that it's deep almost deep impossible deep. to tell. It's yeah. difficult. Yeah. Another question we, we, we actually had quite a bit of um, out in drivers, why weren't Karula and Hosanna and Shangile uh, affected with the, the white muscle disease like the lions? Well, it, as you've, you've said, Michael, it's, it's a lot to do with their diet. So I think she has a much more varied diet. And you must remember they also, when we're not with them, they're eating monitor lizards and squirrels. So she's got a much more varied diet. Uh, the buffalo were one of the hardest hit by that drought. So they utilized every ounce of fat they had just to stay alive. Where the, and also, you must remember, they're quite Catholic in their diet. They're, they're after the grass. They will eat leaves sometimes, but their diet isn't very varied, and they've had to travel massive distances between water and grazing, whereas the leopard's diet has not only made up of buffalo, except if you're a very big male like Anderson, but it's been very varied, so I think they've managed to get the fat. Mm. I would agree with that completely, and I think mm -hmm. the buffalo were self were digesting their fat. Yeah, I mean, leopards are eating spiders and termites and, and a fish sometimes, of course, a very good source of oil and selenium in many cases. So I think they, they're fine, and they certainly didn't ever look like that sort of gangly, no. um, no, miserable look at all. They looked very happy yeah. throughout the day. They still look happy, yeah. everybody. They looked so yeah. happy very this happy. afternoon. Especially because they saw the killer mm. in foot. I think that made cool is I think it probably did, indeed. Well, On that happy note, <laughs> it's very happy note. Yeah, uh, it's good. To, it's, we're happy to say the Nkumas seem to be recovering. They are alive and well, bouncing and, about. Yeah, bouncing yes. about. And it's time for us to, to say goodbye. Say goodbye. Yes. Goodbye, and everybody. We will see you in the morning. Yes. Bye, bye everybody. Bye, guys. Bye, bye. Great to have you with us. And it's uh, five o'clock tomorrow morning. Five Don't be late. Five, five o'clock tomorrow morning. See you then. <laughs> <laughs> Hot enough, Brian. Yes, very <laughs> we have got so much more to show you from the African bush. So I'll tell you what, why don't you click subscribe here, activate it with a little bell here, and you'll get a notification every time we go live. That's two, three hour safaris every single day.